With just 18 hours until the public head to the ballot box, a new GB News People's Poll predicts that Sir Keir Starmer will secure the keys to number 10. Yes, well, uh, let's take a look at what voters are thinking. So here you go, Labour ahead with 36% of the vote. Reform UK in second place with 20%. The Conservatives down on 16%, the Liberal Democrats 10 the Greens 9 and the SNP have 4%. Well, despite Labour's lead, only a minority of voters think Britain will be safe in safe hands with a Labour government, just 32 per cent. Mm, interesting. And a plurality of 2019 Tory voters want a more small C Conservative Conservative Party, whereas 13 per cent want a more Liberal Party and 17 per cent like it as it is. <laughs> Plus... There is a little tribal loyalty left in British politics, as half the country say they're only lending their party of choice their vote. Around 60% of Labour voters say they'll be lending their vote to another party. That's very interesting, but only one in four voters think the outcome of the election will make a big difference to their lives. Hmm. Goodness me, lots to digest there. Let's speak to the man behind the poll, the pollster and academic Professor Matt Goodwin joins us now. Uh, uh, first of all, it seems very, very odd that there is this lack of enthusiasm, this uh, sort of lack of um, uh, fulsome support behind any of these parties. And it looks like Sir Keir Starmer is going to waltz into number 10 on a lower share of the vote than Boris Johnson. I think that's right, Tom. This is still very much the none of the above election. We know it's taking place amid record levels of distrust and a lack of confidence in the political class. That was some crucial research going into this election campaign. And since the campaign started, we've really seen a lot of voters rejecting not just the Conservatives, but also Labour. I mean, here's one thing to consider. The combined vote share currently for the two main parties looks set to be the lowest combined vote share really since the two-party system that we have today began. There's going to be high levels of support for reform, the Lib Dems, Greens, the SNP. And I think under the surface of these results on Thursday night, Friday morning, I do think this public disillusionment is going to be very visible and unavoidable for many people. Now, Professor, I think it's worth pointing out that you have reform on quite a high proportion of the vote there. Now, other pollsters aren't putting them that high and they're putting Conservatives above 20 percent in some we've seen in the last couple of days. What are you doing differently? Yeah, so I think there's a couple of things going on here. The first is, like everybody else, we have the Labour Party down. We've got a bit more evidence that Labour's been squeezed in the final days of the campaign. They're down to uh, the mid 30s. Uh, the difference here is we have reform second, the Conservatives third. Now we have reform on 20 percent. Lord Ashcroft last night had them on 18 percent. Salvation have just released a poll as I was coming on air, which have reform on 17 percent. Other pollsters have them down at 11, 12 percent. So there is a lot of variation as to where people are putting this reform vote share. We're not doing anything differently. We're using the same methodology we've used uh, during the entire election campaign, before the campaign. We're using a, a data provider that's used by three or four different pollsters. Um, so we haven't changed our uh, underlying method at all. We're simply saying that we expect the reform party vote, not necessarily seats, remember, but the vote share to be a little bit higher than what some other pollsters uh, are putting it. And this is the interesting point, is it not? When we're looking at uh, national vote share, of course, we're looking at the SNP there in your poll on, on 4%. If another party was on 4%, they would barely get any seats. The SNP are going to get double digits, likely, of mm. seats because it's a very concentrated vote share. I wonder mm. if reform, given their big air war message, their sort of rallying style of politics, trying to get the message out to as many people across the country as possible, is perhaps less targeted. And therefore, there are going to be quite a few ways wasted reform votes in seats that they would never hope to win. I think that's a great point, Tom. Uh, there is some analysis already by some of my academic colleagues showing that this is going to be the most disproportional election since 1983, since the SDP uh, almost replaced Labour in the national polls. Some viewers will remember uh, that time in British politics. And what that means is that we're going to see lots of uh, votes not corresponding to the same number of seats. So you might see, for example, Nigel Farage in reform, a bit like in, he did in 2015, polling 4 million votes, but only coming out with one or two seats. In the same way, you might see 
for example, the Conservatives polling, you know, uh, a, a low share of the vote uh, compared to what they're used to, but but still, you know, a fairly large number of seats. And I think one of the key messages that's going to come out of this election, I suspect, will be, again, this case for reform, that we're going to not reform the party, but reform the system. We're going to have lots of people feeling as though they've been voting for parties that have won very few seats, and we're going to have a lot of apathy out there in the country. The other thing, by the way, briefly to keep your eyes on, is turnout. Uh, turnout may well fall into the low 60s, if not the high 50s. So we might see something like what we saw in 2001, 2005, you know, lots of people just refusing to engage with the election at all. That's another key thing uh, to watch out for. But this is going to be, you know, fascinating. There's so many known unknowns going into this. How many seats are reform going to win? How low are the Tories going to go? How high is Labour going to go? Will Labour re-emerge in Scotland? I suspect they will. Also, the Lib Dems, are they going to have a better night than some are predicting? And where are those undecided voters going to go, mm. Emily and Tom? I mean, we've got 6 to 10 percent undecided voters even today. What are they going to do when they go into the polling station? So treat all polls with a pinch of salt. All right. That's the first thing really to say. And just lastly, I'd, I'd leave viewers with this. We're either going to see the biggest Labour majority that we've really seen ever in British history or we're going to see the biggest error that we've ever had in polling uh, in the polling industry's history, in which case pollsters should really shut up shop and walk away with their tail between their legs. So we're going to see one of those two things. Yeah. I'm Fascinating. Um, Matt, we're not going to let you go quite yet. Um, very interesting, some of the questions you're asking. Uh, only a minority of voters think Britain will be in safe hands with a Labour government. 43% think it will, be not, will not be in safe hands. The level of scepticism... And also what we see is, is how people aren't really voting for something. They're voting against the alternative. Perhaps that's different when it comes to um, reform, because there's a bit of momentum behind that, people voting for that to be the opposition, that party. Um, but yes, people you know, are just scared of the other option. It's a bit depressing, isn't it? Well, I think, take reform as an example. We now know we've had some new data from YouGov yesterday on this. Uh, I've also surveyed reform voters. We know that they're voting for the party because they like what the party's offering, right? They want uh, lower levels of legal migration. They want lower levels of uh, illegal migration. They want to leave the ECHR. They want stronger borders. So we know that's an instrumental vote. People are voting for reform because they like it. But we also know that when it comes to the Labour Party in particular, there's actually very little mass public enthusiasm for the Labour opposition. It's not that Keir Starmer is winning this election. It's that the Tories are really losing it. And you can see that in lots of areas. For example, if you ask people, who do you trust the top issues to manage, sorry, the top issues facing Britain, do, do you trust Labour or the Conservatives to manage the economy, the NHS, immigration? On lots of these questions, yes, Labour are ahead slightly, but on lots of these questions, if you add up the number of people who say none of them or I don't know who to back, that's often the winner. Keir Starmer's leadership ratings, they're OK, but they're pretty flat. His, his net leadership rating is about plus eight. Uh, Tony Blair in 1997 was plus 50. OK, yeah. so we don't have a leader who's cutting through, which is why, you know, my prediction, if, if I'm allowed to make one, is that I do think this Labour government, if, if indeed we end up with one, um, is going to be very unpopular very quickly because it doesn't seem to have strong foundations. There isn't a positive endorsement of Labour. So you've got a lot of uh, disillusionment out there in the country. We know the economy is not going to improve anytime soon. We know Labour have had to buy into public spending cuts that have been left in the government finances. And we know probably taxes are going to have to go up if we're being honest with voters or we're not going to be able to afford the amount that we're spending on our national debt and public services. So if you put all of that together, I do think this Labour government is going to have a very difficult time in office. Uh, and it may be that, you know, this honeymoon period, if there is one for Keir Starmer, may be one of the shortest honeymoon periods we've actually had in contemporary British politics, where the debate moves on from, hey, look at this massive majority to, hey, look at all of these problems in a matter of hours. Mm. Yes, I've um, been talking to a number of commentators who, uh, who will say that sort of look, look at this pothole in the road. This is currently Rishi Sunak's pothole, but on Friday, that becomes Keir Starmer's pothole, and everyone becomes very, very angry with Keir Starmer, because what on earth is he going to do about it? Matt Goodwin, thank you so much for joining us and talking us through yeah. that poll. Really interesting stuff there. Uh, and I have to say that 
When people say the Labour Party can't possibly get almost every seat in the House of Commons, I mean, that's a ridiculous thing to think about. You only have to look back to 2015 and Scotland. The SNP won all but three seats in Scotland. All but three seats on less than half the vote. Because the, 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 the pro-UK vote was split between three parties and the SNP took up all the independents' votes. I mean, a similar thing could happen with a split in the centre-right here in the UK. Ah, uh, possibly.